we make a mistake at the, at the beginning. We were, we were responsible. When we start, first, we, we don't realize how what we did was wrong. Because we, we, did, we, did, we make a mistake. Because pollution of river, of everything, we invent that. When the inventor of stonewashed denim says the industry is destroying the planet, maybe we should take a look at what is denim and how we ended up with this mess. If you ask someone why they wear denim jeans, the most likely answer is because they're comfortable. If you would know what denim was initially created for, that answer would make you giggle. Good quality denim is not really comfortable because it was never meant to be. It was meant to be one of the toughest materials gold mine workers and cow farmers could wear. Levi Strauss, a Bavarian immigrant, made blue jeans popular in San Francisco in 1853. He noticed that gold miners worked in very hard conditions. The material he made pens out of had to resist scratches, dampness, coldness and sometimes even extreme heat. Most of us still associate jeans with cowboys. This image was subsequently reinforced with the advent of Hollywood westerns in the 1940s and 1950s. The jean-clad cowboy was an essential part of the plot. Actors like John Wayne and Roy Rogers used their on-screen macho image to further popularize a new denim contender on the market, Wrangler. While men were fighting the Second World War, women had to take over most of the manufacturing industrial jobs. This introduced a lot of women to denim, which became popular through images depicted in the film Rosie the Riveter from 1944. Post-war, most of the women kept their distance from denim and returned to more classical materials. Strangely enough, most American universities banned women's jeans on campus well into the 1960s and 1970s. Jeans started to be slowly identified with the artistic alternative lifestyle. Jack Kerouac's classic book On the Road from 1957 pushed denim over the edge into popular culture with over 1 million pairs of jeans sold that year. Hollywood caught up quickly and responded by creating their own denim-wearing heroes such as Marlon Brando, James Dean and Elvis Presley. By the 1960s, jeans and teenagers were inseparable. The big brands were selling more denim, but in their eyes to the wrong people. For example, between 1963 and 1966, Levi Strauss doubled its annual sales. When everyone wears the same pants, people start asking for diversity, for a way to be in, but also to stand out. This leads to consumers looking for more stylish jeans than the standard working man's jeans. Innovations included bell-bottom legs, a variety of colors instead of the traditional indigo, and stonewashed, faded, marbled, torn, distressed, patched and embroidered jeans. The first market boom for denim comes in 1971, when 350 million pairs of jeans were sold in America. Increasingly, new gimmicks were used to maintain jean sales, such as Calvin Klein's famous suggestive 1980 advertising campaigns using Brooke Shields, proclaiming that nothing could come between her and her Calvins. The 2000s implemented mostly untested methods of creating more and more different looks for jeans. This is when François Gibreau, who invented the stonewashed denim look, realizes he made a huge mistake. By using vast amounts of water mixed with rocks and denim, he was getting the look that the market craved for, but the cost to nature was extreme. The chemical water that resulted from the process destroyed rivers, communities, 
and got people sick and killed. Other similar methods like acid washing jeans or sandblasting the warning look compounded the global environmental problem with no solution on the horizon. If we follow the history and evolution of denim closely, we can see that what was called blue jeans at the beginning of the 20th century is not what we are wearing today. And that is because of the way denim is currently produced. Let's break it down. There are 8 different steps that go into producing the jeans you probably have on right now. Cotton cultivation. Ginning and spinning, which is the process of removing the seeds and making yams. Dyeing. Weaving. Fabric finishing, where they remove starch, smooth the fabric and apply a coating or dye. Cutting and making. Garment finishing, where chemicals such as toxic acid is used to give jeans a worn look or certain stripes. And lastly, Trimming and finishing, where buttons, zippers and other functional details are added. This process wasn't always so complex. Not long ago, blue jeans had only one color, were built tough, had just a couple of different cuts and that was that. All that changed when brands realized that catering to every whim is highly profitable. Making jeans faster and faster meant that some denim production steps had to be shorter. Using harmful dyes, lots of chemicals and cheap labor has turned many rivers in China and Bangladesh into disease-ridden, toxic wastelands. We as consumers want cheap jeans faster than ever, so someone has to pay that price. There is no cheap denim. If you would like to know more about who actually pays for your cheap jeans and the impact it has on our environment, please watch the River Blue documentary. Now that we understand how harmful denim production has become, let's take a look at what we can do to wear it for good. And by this, I mean wearing it longer and reducing the harm it does to the planet. There are seven things that we can do right now to get longer-lasting, sustainable denim. If you are in the market for a new pair of jeans, make sure to check what it's made out of. For example, jeans that have 1-2% elastane or polyester are not biodegradable. And that means that you have to recycle them and cannot throw them away. Keep in mind that the stretch factor added to denim makes the material weaker and it loses its shape faster. So you're basically losing money with this option, so skip it completely. It's better to choose denim made out of 100% organic or recycled cotton or cotton mixed with other natural and biodegradable materials like linen or tensile. Once you have your good denim, wash it as little as possible, air it as often as you can and clean individual spots by hand. If you have to wash your jeans, wash them inside out and together with similar colors. To avoid discoloration, hang up the jeans to dry as soon as the washing machine is done. Do not tumble dry. And the best way to storage your jeans is to use the hanger you would use for your regular pants. Because denim is so resilient, you can easily repair it or refresh it. If you go to denimrepair.com, you will see the extent to which you can fix your jeans. Besides, any neighborhood tailor or repair shop will help you fix your jeans and make them look like new. Some sustainable brands even provide you with a free repair of their jeans. The best example is Nudie Jeans. Even if you can afford new quality denim, I suggest to firstly look at some vintage or second-hand options. I always find some gems in there. And keep in mind that some ethical brands offer upcycled denim. One of my favorite shops like this is 
Will and Pop from the UK. Depending on what kind of materials your jeans were made out of, they can be recycled and turned either into a new pair or into an insulation. There are several ways you can recycle your jeans. You can leave them in the special recycling bins that you can see in some shops. For example, Levi's has this kind of bins in almost all of their shops. And also you can mail your old jeans to special organizations, for example, to bluejeansgogreen.org. I find this option extremely smart because it takes away the hassle of recycling. Basically, you get your jeans, you enjoy them for some time, and then when you are tired, you can send them back and get a new pair in different color or cut. If you also like this idea, I'll suggest checking mud jeans because they are specializing in leasing sustainable denim. Sustainable brands create their jeans without stone washing, sand blasting and scrapping methods. Instead, they use modern technology like lasers or ozone that require less water, zero to just a small amount of chemicals that are being captured and reused. On my blog you can find a list of brands that create sustainable denim. I will leave the link in the description. And if you'd like to have a comprehensive guide for sustainable denim and other items of clothing on your phone for easy shopping, I suggest buying the ethical brand guides for Europe and the US. You can find both of them on my website. I'm sure these seven ways of wearing denim will cater to everyone. Transitioning to a sustainable wardrobe takes time, so don't judge yourself too harshly for your past decisions. Instead, make sure that the denim you already own lasts as long as possible. And then start adding new sustainable denim at your own pace. And remember, throwing things away is not a solution. That being said, I have some questions for you. How do you preserve your denim? How often do you buy it? And where from? Let's discuss it in the comments and learn from each other. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to share it with your friends. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.